Hey, I'm Alemi from Yeo Botanica. Welcome back. I really, really appreciate all the support, all the participation from all of you. Today's video is about the ancestral altar must-haves. There was so much participation for the 11 mistakes made at the altar, I decided to do this one. So definitely give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share us with others, hit the bell for notifications, and let's get started. So with the ancestral altar, today I'm not gonna go through why you put each item at the altar. If you wanna learn about that, you're free to take private classes with me or come to my, some of my group classes. But for the sake of the video, what I'm going to do is tell you some of the essentials and I'll throw one or two details in, right? So the first thing is this white cloth, right? This is a place for elevation of the ancestors, elevation for the spirit. Remember, the sky is not black. The next thing I'm going to put is a goblet, right? You would be putting it in the center, preferably. Um, for me, because of the video, so that it doesn't block me, I'm going to put this here. I believe in safety. There's no amount of spirituality that you can have that's going to trump safety. So I like to put a candle holder or something of the sort on the altar. Why? I've seen many people have fires at their altar, either a glass being broken or too much heat, or they get dark spots on their altar cloth. So this prevents all of that, right? I'm gonna fill up this water. And we have water here for clarity, for flow, as a catalyst for the spirit, right? And for people who read water, this is perfect, right? And for me, when I teach this, it's all the way to the brim, all the way up. Nice, cool, clear, and clean. If you remember my other video from the 11 mistakes, we went through clean, not clean water glasses, right? This is beautiful, it's clean. The next thing is that you need something to anchor the altar. So anchoring the altar is usually with something, some kind of spiritual item, a rosary, a cross, your choice, based on your tradition. So if you're a person watching this and your family is Muslim and you're choosing to put an altar, then you need to put things there that are for Muslim, for Jewish, for Hindu, whatever your tradition is, including Christianity. We sell these in the store. These are really, really special. These are um, crosses made out of olive wood, which for Christians, this is a cat's meow, right? So this can be here. It can be back here. I'm going to put one on the side just so I give you guys ideas. This is a cr cr uh, cross with a Christ. You can put it on the wall. Let's say this is the wall in your home. Uh, some people have these in metal. We sell them also in metal. You can put it inside the glass. But for those of you who really um, don't totally identify with the Christian cross, the Ankh, which is the first version of that, is perfectly, perfectly fine. The Ankh can be put uh, at the altar, still to represent the God force, right? So for the sake of the video, I'm going to put this one here. You can put it on the inside. You can also put it in front, right? So the next thing that I like to put at the altar is the offering of tobacco. So you can have a pipe with loose tobacco inside. People who have Indian relatives also, it's great for them. But a lot of reaching, oh, far reaching ancestors love tobacco, the smell, the smoke, spirit travels in the smoke. But if you're a person that you have issues with this, just burn some incense at the altar. You can still do that even if you have this, but if smoke is an issue for you, or tobacco is an issue for you, then just burn a little incense, right? 
So I'm just giving you an example. You can do a cigar and or, and or tobacco. And we sell these in the store, these little corn pipes. They're fantastic for the ancestors, especially people who are of American uh, heritage. So then, another essential is we sell these here also. <laughs> these are really, really sturdy espresso cups. So you can put coffee here, last all week. You don't have to worry about putting a big cup of coffee and you have a saucer and or a larger plate to put offerings for the spirit, right? I like to put sweets. I believe that my relationship with the spirit should always be sweet. And so I leave sweets at my altar all the time. These sweets, when you're ready to exchange them, you can eat them, throw them outside for good luck, share them with other people, whatever. But it's really nice to keep sweets at your altar. Da 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 da. The picture. <laughs> there are many people who say, I don't have pictures of relatives. Um, you can write relatives' names and put them on a nice sheet of paper or something at your altar. If you have pictures of relatives, you can put pictures of relatives at the altar, right? So me, I like to put them in a nice frame. I think that when you leave them out, they get really kind of curled up and yucky. So I like to put them in a frame on the wall or on the table if you have a big enough space for that. And remember in my mistakes video, no living people in the picture on the altar, right? And for people who are a little bit more advanced who have an ancestral staff, which is really more people who are in the local me tradition at their ancestral altar, they will have a staff for the ancestors that is consecrated. But you, if you are not a priest or not into the tradition, but you want to have a space for your ancestors, you can have a staff that you tap on the ground to call them at times when you go to your altar. So this is an example of one that we sell in the store. This one has two faces and snakes and all that kind of stuff on it. But you can also have something like a cane for a relative who may be passed on, grandparent, whomever that may have used a cane. You can also have things at the altar that really are reminiscent of them. One of the last things that um, is really nice to have at the altar, it's almost a mandatory, and so in many circles, especially um, Lukumi Santeria circles, a libation is necessary of some kind of clear liquor or clear liquid. In this case, this is rum, right? So we've got that as an essential. And one of the last things is some kind of noisemaker. I like noisemakers at the altar, and I think people need to do that because it kind of brings the attention. I'm here, I'm ready to speak, I'm ready to talk. And remember, I did not show one to you today, but I want to remind you, whatever you pray with, Bible, prayer books, your phone, whatever, say prayers for the ancestors in the context of what their religious lineage is. So if they were Christians, say some prayers from the Bible, right? If they are Jewish, say some of those prayers from the Torah, from the Quran, wherever, right? Give them some of the things that they were used to hearing when they were alive. I hope that this has been helpful. You learned some things, you got some clarity, and you're enjoying having an ancestral altar or this has inspired you to do so. One of the last things that I would say is do not put the altar up if you're not going to maintain it because this is a blessing for you to have your altar set up. So all of you, if you want to know what exactly is this advanced ancestral stick, comment below and definitely, definitely keep in touch with us because below again in the link i'm going to give you a special prayer for the ancestors once you click on it it's going to take you straight to the prayer 
and you can either print it out, put it at your altar or whatever. That's my special gift to you. So comment below, thumbs up, share us with others and come visit us in the store. See you next time. Ashe, ashe, ashe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, definitely like us, give us a thumbs up, share us with others, send us your comments, come visit us in the store and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. See you next time.